Welcome to the Feudal Anime Podcast. I'm your host, Jack. And I'm Rick. And today we're talking about Girls und Panzer, which is uh, Girls and Tanks, if you uh, prefer the full English translation of it. Um, this was my choice this week, and I gotta say... Yeah, that's another slice of life. It wasn't a slice of life. <laughs> How is this a slice of life? I mean, like, I can understand you saying it being a slice of life if it didn't deal with high schoolers literally driving tanks. And shooting at each other with live rounds, mind you. Yeah, you know. I don't know how you grew up, but that was my childhood to a T. I know. (laughs) I know exactly how you grew up. (laughs) Oh, God. No, thankfully you chose something a little more random in the slice of life. Uh, I don't know why you keep saying out of. it's it's not a slice because of life. It's, 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 how how is this a slice of life? How how it's, like in what not. way is I, this? I will concede the fact it's not a slice of life. However, going into it, <laughs> I had resigned myself that it was just this bullshit. Slice of life thing. You created a wiki page for this saying it's not a slice of life just so I could walk in with high hopes. So, you know, set the bar low, walk in, be impressed. That was my theory. And that's what I did. And I still wasn't impressed. Look, look for a guy who, who constantly harps on slices of lives. All right. For a guy who constantly harps on this, understand understand one of the ones that you chose was a slice of life just to throw that out there just just uh kind of throw a little salt on it and not only that out of the ones that i chose that were a slice of life you liked them all except for one (sighs) and you and i both agreed that the one that we did not like it was bad but Regardless, regardless, <laughs> Girls in Panzer or Girls in Panza was a very unique anime to to say the least. Um, it does revolve around some uh, high school girls, uh, a group of them to uh, be a little bit more specific. It's not just any group. And then on top of that, they're on aircraft carriers that are big enough to hold an entire town to where you need cars to commute from one end to the other. Are you sure you don't need tanks? Well, tanks help out too. Just a bit. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, yeah, it's uh, basically the reason why they're driving around in these tanks and everything like that is because it's supposed to give them power and m- make them more attractive to the male counterparts that are <laughs> nowhere to really be found unless they're an adult and creepy old men. Um, or it's an elective for a high school class. Yes, it is a hi- elective for a high school class, at least for the people that are growing up and living and going to school on aircraft carriers that some of which are even bigger than what you could ever possibly imagine. Well, see, the thing I found really interesting was that you don't notice or know that it is uh, a warship. Essentially, like I, I, our biggest warships are be are dwarfed by these typical seafaring vessels yeah and you and and you're right you don't know about it until the end of episode one when they're panning back and they just keep panning and panning and then it's like wait they're on a ship yeah exactly you're like wait a second because they have a river they've got all different types of terrain they've got cities they've got mountains yeah they have rain and it's the scale just baffles your mind and to think this this whole thing (laughs) you're led to believe that in much of the same way you would decide what college you'd like to go to these girls and children are able to decide what high school they want to go to and it's said over and over that our main protagonist actually side note and i'm kind of curious protagonist that works for male and female or 
like there's protagonists and protagonists or something like that. Is this a, a thing? I always assumed that protagonist was the main character of a particular show. So sex is not, doesn't matter either one. Okay. So we'll just keep protagonists. In. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, you can so always just call the this- main character if you want, if you want to go that route. Although this okay. one has what? Five main like, characters. Yeah, I was going to say we have five teams of sub characters and one team of main characters. Well, four sub teams and one main team. That grows. Like by the end, you have like what? Six sub team, uh, seven sub teams and one main team or something like that, or two main teams or, and, and the rest are sub teams or something along those lines. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, well, yeah. let's just, well, at the beginning you're, you're going off of the, viewpoint of what is considered to be the main character in my opinion or the protagonist in my opinion and the the girl goes hey i chose this high school because you don't have the tank program yeah which and, is called uh Senshido. oh see i watched the uh the dubbed version they, yeah, they, they call them tankers uh yeah no they uh they call it in the subversion Senshido. Probably sounds better. I started watching in the the subbed version, but I switched over to the dubbed version, honestly, because it was funnier. They they didn't take it nearly as seriously, and I have no idea if the translation matter like matched. But just some of the stuff that they said, I I feel matched the animation quality very well. Gave me a little giggle or two every every episode. <laughs> but you have you 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 have the whole. Main main person has a trauma in their past, wants to get away from something they excel at immensely, and they are, by their friends and by their surroundings, aided in overcoming their past trauma to become even better than before. And you also have the older sister, uh, what do you call it? Um, it's not a trope. It's the older sister s- syndrome where your your elder siblings are way better than you or perceived to be way better than you. And they look down on you because you're a younger sibling. Uh, but we find out that a little bit later on in the beginning, she's a loner and the head of, and this only happens in anime. I've never, actually that's not sure. Napoleon Bonaparte, if the legends were true, he was rather short. Um, no, he wasn't that but actually the, the, that short. Yeah, from what I understand, he was like 5'10 or something like that, which isn't short for that time period, but because meters and feet and the crossover, it was propaganda. But that's neither here nor there. Um, The head council lady is really short and really bossy and walks right up to our protagonist and goes, hey, we're glad you're here because you're going to lead our tanker division. You're going to lead the tanker elective. And she's like, I don't do that anymore. And she goes, I'm so glad we had this talk. We'll see you in, in the field. And that's the start of her, her, her journey, I guess you will. And the funny thing is, and this makes absolutely no sense. The tanker division or the, the, the tanker elective was once popular on the, in this high school. And they somehow lost the tanks. Well, explain they, that to me. Uh, they didn't lose the tanks. The tanks that they keep finding throughout, which they have to go out and find, are the tanks that they couldn't sell. Right. So they were just like throwing around in their junk. And I mean, it, it baffles the mind on how some of the tanks get into certain areas, like one tank they find in the side of a mountain. <laughs> yeah. Which is, how did you get there? But, uh, yeah, the what they did was, and those tanks were were what's left out of everything else that were sold. So they sold all the rest of the tanks and all the ones which by the end there's a total of eight. Um, that's all that's left out of all the tanks that they had. And they're not even for war. I don't know if they have war in this world or not, but they're using live rounds. And actual Panzer tanks and different kinds of tanks. And it was actually really cool. Um, yep. Something I was not really expecting was the fact that they were very accurate in not only the name of the type of tank, but 
the pros and cons of each and every type of tank they throw out there. I think they're a little bit too worldly when it comes to that. I think they had too much knowledge, but well, they were basing it on world war two era tanks. And so they want, they needed to make sure that they were getting it at least right, which is something that at least they chose to do here in comparison to the magnificent Kotobuki. <laughs> May that anime hey. rest in peace. Oh, God. It can't um, if you keep talking about it. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, they, so at least they did that. And the reason why they, I feel the reason why they did that is because for it to truly bring uh, the story together and to, and to do it some kind of justice is they needed to make sure that they were at least portraying the tanks in a way that they should have been portrayed, even though they were being driven by high schoolers. Yeah. High schoolers who were very surprised by what everything does. And Oh, it smells like grease. That was and, one of the big mm-hmm. good. No, grease no. and what? Gr- grease and metal. It smells like grease and metal. Well, it's a tank. Of course, it's going to smell like <laughs> yeah, grease and metal because right. it's got grease and metal. Well, well mm. what did you expect? Well, I expected it to be sunshine and roses. I am glad, though. So, after they find the tanks and everything like that, the uh, uh, one of the girls says, "No, you need to keep it traditional in terms of style and how it looks. You know, with the paint color." Right. Well, everyone else uh, for the first like episode, they decided to paint it like bright gold, bright red, red, pink. <laughs> like one of them yes. had like flags on it and everything like that. And it's like, yeah, no, you're you're just going to stand out. You're a moving target at that point. Exactly. It's it was uh, it, it it was an interesting show, to say the least. Um, it was an experience. It was an experience. And it and for the most part, they showed each battle in full, with the exception of one where they jokingly skip past it really quick. For they, they basically flash, it's like, hey, this person already lost. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> but we didn't see their amazing <laughs> their amazing fighting ability. For some reason, okay, now explain this to me. In their very first battle, that big badass tank that took out all the other tanks, right? In the very first mock battle before they learned really anything. When they're like, oh, these tanks are great. Let's test them out. And uh, the instructor came. That tank had such firepower as a stationary thing. So their, their accuracy was on point. Their power was pristine. What happened to that when like they went into the very next battle and it didn't move as well fire when it did hit, it wasn't as powerful. It was, it was it just that the tanks that the other team had were just that much better armed. Yes. And they made that reference a couple of different times. The tank that, uh, the tanks that Yukari, who is arguably the main, main, no, 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 no. Sorry. Miho is the main, main character. Uh, and then you have Mako, Yukari, Hana, and uh, Sarori, who are the main people in this one tank. And each one of them has like their own special ability or lack thereof in terms <laughs> of how the tank runs and operates. So, uh, what, what was her name? Um, not Mako, uh, Hana. The reason why they were able to take out the other tanks so pristinely and so quick is because the other ones were full of themselves and they were all ganging up on her on that one tank. And the one tank had someone that Hana, who was a better aim and another person that had was a better driver and the other one that was better at communication about what needed to be done. And then, you know, Miho was even better at giving direction and commanding at what needed to be done. And that's why it seemed like it was overpowering when it really wasn't. It was just. Okay. Now what I did find interesting 
And I'm going back here. You can now I hate to go back to it, but one of the things I found funny was the inner workings of each tank, each personnel, how they interact. They kind of went over the top for comedic effect while still being accurate. For instance, um, the lookout, the guy on top that sees everywhere is to tell the driver who's basically running blind, which way to go by kicking them in the shoulder, left to go left, right to go right and verbal commands beyond that. And, and <laughs> they kind of overdo it where the lookout's like, I don't want to kick her. I like her. And she's the, the driver basically says, Hey, kick me as hard as you can. When she's kicked, she goes, Oh crap. No, not, no, 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 not that hard. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, they brought some uh, comedic effect to uh, some of the accuracies or some of the details that, that needed to be there to help kind of explain how things actually needed to work within the side of the tank. But at the same time they you lose that illusion, you lose that, uh, accuracy when they're, tr- when they're talking and communicating with other, with the other tanks at the same time through text message and, and phone calls. Yeah. Text message in general. It goes over each battle and you have the like the mock battle at the very beginning, which is between Japan and the United Kingdom. And then for their first battle, their actual battle, it's between them and the United States. And because someone in the United States team was doing an underhanded tactic, even though it's not wrong it's not cheating it's a legitimate tactic which is listening in on communications they decide to cut their fleet in half at which point they could have easily won and you know they ended up losing and then it's almost like they have plot armor you know plot armor (laughs) if only if only um but uh they skip over the second one and they go straight to the the third main battle and it's between them and Russia and them being the main characters team, them being the main characters team. So like Miho and her team against Russia and their team. And at that point you find out the reason why that Miho was being pressed into Senshido is because if they don't win Senshido, the school gets shut down. Because they're just losing money, like that that whole sh- battle station, ship, school, living city, whatever, gets shut down if they don't win. Yeah, it serves real no no real purpose, no real profit. Yeah, and it throws more serious vibes into their battle, and they're more they're, I mean, if you can even call it serious. But it, it raises the stakes. And as a viewer, if you can get past the animation and if you can get past the shaky dialogue, if you're invested in this, this gives you a, hey, we got to win it. We, we, we need this for this. It gives you a goal and an objective and a reason for wanting this. Exactly. Now, each of the characters have their own quirks of uh, the supporting characters that is all the way throughout and... Some of them I just I personally found pretty annoying, especially when one like the vice president vice president of the student council. Uh, gosh, what was her name? I don't remember. Was she the one that was firing everywhere in the beginning? Yeah, she just totally wigged out, like lost her cool. Fire, 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 fire! You're just yeah, yeah. The yellow tank, the one that yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, actually, let me look it up. I might have it here. Momo. Momo. Yeah. Momo. When Momo was in the tank, I, I just found her very annoying because when she would just sit there and fire and just fire blindly, just not even really aiming, just like pulling the trigger, just wigging out. And everyone else on the team just about was doing the exact same team except for Miho and her team. Like apparently Weird what experience will do. Yeah, like her for her, 
it was like it was calm, collected, and everything like that. And everyone else was just like either wigging out, crying, running out of their tanks because that's a great idea to do in the middle of a battlefield. And even though, yeah, they're it's live ammo. Yeah, even though they're firing live ammo, for whatever reason, um, no one ever gets hurt. It's like it's supposedly a rare thing. Well, in in the English version, they actually address that. Because in uh, they address that in battle number, I think one, no, the second battle. So the, after the mock battle, um, one of the girls talks to the main character and says, "Hey, you got to come inside. You're going to get hit." Main character says, "Oh, we rarely get hit. They don't aim for me. I Meaning they don't aim for the people. They aim for the tank." Yeah, no, they they said that too. What I'm saying is, in general. Like, you see some of the tanks, like, burst into flame. They explode, and they're like, oh, yeah, no, we're okay, and they get out and walk away. Like, some of the damage that's being done to them is, like, severe oh. damage, and no one well, gets see, hurt. I, I, I do think it's a little bit funny, because they, you're right. They do damage the tanks. They damage property, which, for some reason, everyone's happy about, but they don't damage themselves ever. And yeah, I, I, I remember a few times where the tank legitimately not just burst into flames, but went boom. And they're like, yeah, we're good. Yeah. Or flipped over, burst into flames and then went boom. And then they're all saying, yeah, we're okay. <laughs> it's like, all right, well, we that doesn't the, make sense, but whatever. We hit the eject button underground. We were fine. When you get to the final battle, that's, that's when things I feel like really started trying to come together. At that point, like everyone was a little bit more mature. You already had the foundation set for like the main battle in between it in between them and the the school, her rival school where her sister wa- was where she used to be a student at. And it's uh, you know, David versus Goliath. It's their because when they get to the final battle, they find three more tanks, so they have eight tanks versus twenty. Now, what I always thought was interesting is they barely had enough people for their five tanks. Where the hell did they get these extra people who were already integrated to fill those extra three tanks? Do you know what I mean? One of the, so like the tank that was known to be pretty bad, like blow, uh, like too heavy, catches fire, overheats real easy and slow and heavy, you know, that one, the mechanic team decided to, to drive that one themselves since they were the ones that were fixing it. Anyways, they chose to drive that one. Another tank that came up, they were able to get some recruits to be able to drive that one. And for the final tank, they were again, able to get a recruit from some people who then also invited others to be able to drive the tank. Amazing how this works. You know, magical. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Truly, it was a magical moment. It, uh, at I least, would have preferred at ahead. least each team had its own unique characteristics. Yes, and I I did like that. I I feel that it's going to sound weird, but I feel that each tank had its own kind of personality. That when they explained its purpose in the war. World War II specifically, well, obviously, because it's it's part of the World War II <laughs> setting. Um, its crew kind of gravitated towards that personal that personality. Like, um, I thought that was kind of unique and, and kind of cool. What I would have preferred, to be honest, is if they didn't have to pull those people from outside. If they were always part of the group, they just didn't have the tanks, and so they subbed them out. You know. You have, you're, you're strong doing this. You're strong doing this. We need this in the battle. They, they were able to interchange a little bit. And they're like, hey, we found a tank that fits your personality. Perfect. Here, use this. You already know our strategy. We worked with you. We trust that you'll do what we say immediately without question. And you trust that I'm going to give you good instruction rather than, oh, yeah, we'll just do what you say because it works. Yeah. Um, I, I agree with you there. Um, also, I found it pretty interesting uh, for the final tank battle. They had this uh, really massive tank. And the way they chose to take the tank out, because 
you know, all these tanks firing at the tank just wasn't doing anything because the armor was so thick. Um, they chose to have another <laughs> tank ram it in front, forcing it to go up a little bit and stopping it, pulling the tracks up off the ground because it was smaller, fall, small enough to fit in between the tracks, I guess. Have another tank leap off the edge, like drive off the edge and stop it from being able to turn the turret to block an open vent and another tank was standing some was like sitting somewhere else on a high up ledge aiming down and shooting at it. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, Remember these are acrobatic tanks. Like, wait a minute. Did, did that just happen? These are near indestructible tanks that get taken out by a lead dart. Yeah. Anything that's not a lead dart can't hurt them. Okay. Well, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, I mean, like at that point, I was I was kind of bewildered and like, what the heck am I watching? Or 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 the speed at which they're able to do like dig a ditch or 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 anything else that should be taking <laughs> right? hours that should take hours to do happens in the span of like thirty seconds. It's like all right, well, superhuman women, superhuman. You know, and why are the women the only ones driving the tanks? Like, seriously, why are they the only ones that do this? That's real easy to answer because the men are shopkeepers. Fair enough. That br- that brings me back to another point that I was going to say, but I forgot about. But I'm glad I have it now. I'm glad we brought back. Shut down their their tankery, the, 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 the tanking course and all that stuff. Yeah, they and they're like, yeah, we we have five tanks, maybe somewhere. Why do they have a store dedicated to tank repair if they don't have any tanks? They don't have a store dedicated to tank repair. They, oh, you know, you're right. They do. Now that I think they about, do. Well, it just it's not just tank repair. It's like memorabilia tank, and everything else and tank parts. Oh, you know what? Plot armor, sir. They, Plot armor. Okay. <laughs> That's all you need to remember. <laughs> Nothing else is important so, about this whole I was thing. Th- I was looking at that, I'm like, that looks like a bike shop for tanks. Like they, they had hey they had gears, hey, they just had cause tread- I have a bicycle tank doesn't mean you get to <laughs> knock me down, all right? Uh, <laughs> My friend, if you had a bicycle tank from this anime, you couldn't be knocked down. Unless I had a little dart. Hey, you keep your darts <laughs> to yourself, mister. <laughs> oh, God. But, yeah. It, plot armor. Yeah, that, that's because the plot required it. Exactly. And there's no other reason for it. Because why not? Um, in, and you in, never in, go in, back to it. Right. Well, in the end, it ends, obviously, with... Uh, our heroes winning Miho and her crew obvi- winning because Saving everyone. Yeah. Because that's just how awesome they are and how great they are. <laughs> um, Cause yeah. why not? But that being said, at least it does give it an ending. It does end it. Yeah. I, I, I did like that. It has bookmarks. It has bookends for the story for your, your bookshelf, if you will. Yeah, it, it gave it a clear cut opening. It set the the groundwork for why the main characters were doing what they were doing. It explained what needed to be explained. It gave some comedic relief where it needed to be. And of course, you can't have a, a show without someone that at least annoys you a little bit. So they had that mixed in there, too. You know, I actually have a question. We might have touched on it, but I don't remember. Who was the one that annoyed you the most? Momo. Why? Because of how she was in the tank. See, I had two that just annoyed the crap out of me. The first one, and the one that takes a clear victory, is that boy crazy girl. Everything revolves around making her popular and making boys like her. But you don't ever see boys. No, you do. You don't see boys their age, but you do. And then at the end, when they're when they win, um, she's waving to a bunch of older men. So yeah, 
I mean, she never specified the age range in which she was attracted to. Oh, that took a dark turn. Yeah, I'm just throwing, I'm throwing that out there, man. I'm trying to keep it real. <laughs> throwing right? the facts. Okay, fair. I'm just, I'm just throwing the facts out there. The second one I hated so much because I relate so hard <sighs> was the driver. And she's like, I don't know why people wake up at six in the morning. It's not normal. And then they're like, yeah, you have to show up at six. It just means you have to sh- wake up earlier. And the girl touched my heart and soul when she said that's not normal that doesn't happen so so the people that you hated most was mako and sayori got it all right yeah yeah one because i legitimately hated him and the other one because it was like looking at a mirror granted so, i'm prettier but that's that's not the. i don't know i mean i mean i you know i mean like it's kind of a close comparison i mean like you look almost identical to Ma- uh, mako just saying. Uh, you know, I'll take that compliment. The same. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh God. So, I think that's uh, that. You know, this is a great spot to kind of uh, leave a rating. So, uh, where would you? What would you rate this, sir? Like, how how would you rate this? All right, I gonna have to give it a solid three and a half. Animation brought it down. But comedic value and accuracy brought it, it, it kind of saved it. You can see the story plot a mile away. Plot armor was real thick with this one. But uh, yeah, three and a half out of five. It, I've, I've definitely seen worse. Yes. Yes. We, we most definitely have seen worse. Um, all right. For me, I got to go a little bit lower. I got to give it a 3.25. Mainly because I just can't get past how annoying Momo was. She just like rubbed me the wrong way all the way. Uh, The animation could have been better. Also, for whatever reason, they chose to only have one character when they were cleaning the tanks, dressed in a bikini when everyone else wasn't, which I found a (laughs) little little disturbing personally. It's like, what What was the reason and the point of that? They're cleaning, they're out there, they're cleaning the tanks, that like car wash type of thing. You know, you're expecting the car wash music to pop up. And then it's like, goes to the last person and she's the only one cleaning the tank and she's in a bikini. And it's, why? See, that the reason I liked the English version is they kind of explained that. It was a throwaway line, like, oh, God, you're getting me wet. You can see my bra now. And the girl in the bikini goes, that's why I wore this. So it's not so it doesn't matter. Like that that was the whole reason. Yeah, I really it doesn't matter to me one way or the other. True. Um, but uh, this week it is your choice there, Rick. So uh, what are we watching? All righty. I'm thinking there's an anime I was interested in. I looked it up. It's actually two seasons. So I'd like to just do the first season and see how it goes. Uh, it's called The Asterisk War. Uh, I'm going to butcher this name. It's uh, Gakusen Toshi Asterisk. Um, All right. It's, it's an action comedy, supernatural, kind of harem, kind of romance, mostly school. Um, and it's based on, um, I want to say Bushido. But I could be, I'm probably wrong. Uh, it deals a lot with sword play. It deals with a loner who's really good at something, probably overpowered um, from what the trailer showed me. Um, looks funny. Looks reminiscent of um, Blue Demon. All right, so uh, we're going to break it up into two seasons so uh, or two episodes. So this week we'll do, or this coming week, we're going to do season one, which will be episodes one through 12. And then the second season we'll do the following week, just so we don't break stride and do uh, episodes 13 through 24. Uh, so it'll be a two-parter next week. Part one, the asterisk war. Uh, if you have a... Any thoughts on Girls and Panzer? 
If you want to give a recommendation, uh, let us know what your thoughts are or it, about any of the shows that we have uh, reviewed, please reach out to us at FeudalAnimePodcast at gmail.com or you can reach out to us on the Twitterverse. You can reach us at Feudal Anime Pod. That is Feudal Anime Pod. Until next time, I'm Jack. And I'm Rick. Later. <laughs>